So there hasn't been much to cover with Destiny over the past week or so, but Shadowkeep is just around the corner. Last night we got more updates to do with Shadowkeep and how the game will play out when it arrives. Today we're going to go through all of that, including some crazy nerfs and some crazy buffs too. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking out my channel. If you do enjoy it, make sure you subscribe and if you enjoyed this video, dropping a like really helps me out and I do appreciate that support. Now excuse me if I sound tired, that's because I've only had literally an hour's sleep playing Borderlands all night, which is the game I probably plan on covering. If you guys want to see some of that, I mean it's a looter shooter, it's incredible and I'm pretty sure... About 80% of you guys are on that grinding it too, so I may post a few Borderlands videos, so stay tuned for that. But yes, Destiny 2 Shadowkeep is just around the corner, and last night within the TWAB, we got a few updates, as well as a whole new old map uh, showcasing what's to come. So let's get into it, and we're starting with the actual road map. And we can see on the left, the 1st of the 10th, the 1st of October on launch day, uh, well, this is what we'll get. Well, Destiny 2, the base game, will be free to play, as we all know. And we also get free seasonal updates. The moon destination opens. Seasonal artifact, finishers, armor 2.0, a new strike, the Festroom Core, a new strike, the Scarlet Keep, Crucible updates, reprise PvP map, Widow's Court, and Twilight Gap, a new PvP map, Fragment, Crucible Labs, Elimination, testing trials uh, and free seasonal rank rewards and then we got the season of the undying october to december roadmap and we can see on the 5th of october we get the raid launch as well as the fex offensive which i can't wait for start farming that armor on the 8th of october we get hero and legend nightmare hunts this is where i do believe we will go off against those old foes on the 15th of October, we get Master Nightmare Hunts, and we see a picture of Omnigo there. So that's very interesting. I thought she might be a new strike boss, but maybe, just maybe, she may be just brought back for this Nightmare mode. We will see. We also get Iron Banner on the 15th of October. On the 22nd of October, we get the Exotic Quest for the Leviathan's Breath. This is obviously exclusive to Season Pass Owners. From the 29th of October to the 19th of November, we get the Festival of the Lost, which could be pretty... I, I mean, these kind of events, these small events, I do indeed like, as long as they offer decent loot for us to chase. On the 29th of October, we get the launch of a dungeon and a new PvP mode called Momentum Control. Now, that is... See, well, it sounds pretty epic. Momentum Control, just like a faster-paced control. How are they going to work that? I am curious to find out. And on the 29th of the 10th, we've got an exotic quest for the Divinity. Now, that is seriously intriguing because uh, many of us thought this would be a raid exotic. But seeing as it's coming from an exotic quest, maybe this quest leads us into the raid. I'm not too sure, but the raid launches on the 5th of October. And if it does offer an exotic, I'm pretty sure it will be in there from day one. So maybe, guys, this isn't actually a part of the raid. And it will be a whole unique weapon to itself. On the 5th of November, we get a raid challenge. The first raid challenge, so that insinuates it's going to be more to come. And on the 19th of November, we get the Vex Offensive Final Assault, which sounds pretty epic. And that looks like the Nexus Mine there, but it's got all that green, gooey, grassy, leafy thing all over it. So that's pretty cool, but we will see. So yes, people, the new Shadow Keep looks quite promising, and I'm excited for the 1st of October. Okay, so we're going to get into the TWAB and the changes coming, uh, sandbox updates via Shadow Keep and weapons. And this is what they state. Last week we did a bit of a deep dive on upcoming changes to abilities in Shadow Keep. This week we'll be giving a patch note preview on how your weapons will be fine tuned. For this pass, the team put some love into a few exotics that may have been collecting dust in your vaults. On top of that, a bit of tuning has been done in how damage is applied to different targets in PvE environments. In terms of how these changes will impact your PvP experience, a few weapons and archetypes are being buffed, with some seeing more aggressive range fall off to give breathing room to scout rifles and other weapons. Combatants in general, minor enemies, rank and fire, no longer take more precision damage than other enemies. These enemies previously took twice as much damage to their precision hit locations than enemies of higher ranks. You will still deal precision damage, but this is now entirely dependent on the weapon. 
as it is for higher ranked enemies. Weapon changes general, weapon mods are now treated as reusable unlocks instead of consumables. Any mods you have in your inventory will be converted to unlocks. This gives players the opportunity to play with different mods more frequently. If the only copy of a mod you have is already on a gun, you will need to reacquire one to unlock it. Auto rifles, PvE damage increase between 30% and 25% depending on combatant rank. Bowls, PvE damage increase by plus 31% against minor enemies and plus 26% against major enemies. Fix an issue where bowl draw times were displayed incorrectly in the inspection screen. Hand cannons, PvE damage against minor enemies increased by 30%. Lightweight and adaptive hand cannons use a new firing animation while aiming down sights. This change was made to increase weapon accuracy when firing these weapons as fast as possible. Currently players can shoot faster than the recoil animation of 140-150 archetype hand cannons. So while the hand cannons look to have fully reset from recoil, the following projectile will be shot as if the weapon was still in a recoiled state. So that's actually a wicked change and it will seriously affect the people that do run around using hand cannons. Reduce the effect the range that has on damage range fall off, effective range for this weapon archetype. Wow. Machine guns, PvE damage against minor enemies increased by 25%. Increase the effects of damage range fall off on this weapon archetype. Pulse rifles, PvE damage against minor enemies increased by 28%. Increase the effects of damage range fall off on this weapon archetype. Archetype specific damage changes impacts both PvE and PvP. Rapid fire pulse rifles now deal 14 slash 23.8 base precision damage, previously 13 slash 21.5. Four. High impact pulse rifles now deal 21 slash 33.6 base precision damage, previously 20 slash 32. Meaning high impact pulse rifles will now be two bursts to the face, which I cannot wait for. Scout rifles, PvE damage increase plus 36% and plus 18% depending on combatant rank. Sidearms, PvE damage increase to minor and major combatants by 16%. Sniper rifles, PvE damage increase by plus 47% against minor enemies and plus 20% for others. Exotic sniper rifle perk damage bonuses have been modified to compensate for this change and they will not receive the full benefits as a result. Submachine guns, PvE damage increase by 22.5% against minor and major combatants. Wow, I mean, is that really necessary with a recluse? Jeez, that weapon is going to be an absolute... I mean, it's a monster now in PvE. It's going to be even better. It's going to be basically 20% better, which is just ridiculous. Aggressive frame. Remove the intrinsic effect of deals uh, bonus damage at close range. This damage was 10%, but was unintentionally always active. The bonus damage has been moved to the base damage for 750 RPM submachine guns, resulting in no damage change. As a result, Terrorbat and the Huckleberry gain 10% damage in both PvP and PvE. Wow, could be cool. Now we've got changes to exotics. The sweet business. Increased magazine size to 150. Wow. Increased PvE damage by 15%. High caliber rounds has been replaced with armor piercing rounds. Damage changed to 15 slash 21.2 base precision, previously 13.21 slash 21.14. So not a drastic change there to be honest. This weapon no longer requires you to be firing when you pick up ammo to have it automatically reload. Pretty cool. Graviton Lance, PvE damage increased by 30%. Sunshot, increased magazine size to 12, which we already knew about. Vigilance Wing, PvE damage increased by 25%. Crimson, damage changed to 19 slash 30.5 base precision, previously 13.76 slash 24.75. So that's quite a increase and that could be pretty decent in PvP. Fix an issue that was causing this weapon to deal higher flinch than intended. The Merciless. Fix the missing aim assist stat for this weapon. Ace of Spades. Momentum Mori's damage bonus is now affected by range fall off. Lumina. Noble Rounds should apply their buff to allies more reliable now. The Colony. Serve the Colony. Now functions as auto load and holster does. Perks, subsistence, reduce the impact of this perk on total reserves. Ricochet rounds, remove the hidden bonus to damage fall off. Swashbuckler, perk now activates when getting a kill with ball lightning. Grave rubber, perk now activates when getting a kill with ranged melee abilities, i.e. ball lightning explosive knife. 
one two punch reduce the effectiveness of stacking one two punch and cross counter with the liar's handshake EX players won't be able to defeat Riven in less than 3 seconds after Shadow Keep launches using the combo of 1 2 punch and Liar's handshake. But we know many of you will try other builds and potentially even succeed. Yes, I did see actual Glad destroy Riven in a couple of seconds. Absolutely ridiculous. And one more thing they state, Destiny 2 update 2.5.22 recently brought some frequently requested quality of life changes to the reckoning and rewards. Next week we're making one additional change to the experience further bringing a gap between you and your desired rewards. Starting on September 17th, all negative modifiers will be removed from the reckoning. This activity will continue to feature a weekly singe with a daily rotation of brawler, grenade and heavyweight. Our goal in this change is to improve the replayability of reckoning so players will feel more inclined to hop into the matchmaking for some sweet loot. This should also help to address some feedback items from players that specific modifiers could feel too punishing. We're looking at you, Blackout Dark Blades. And guys, that is it. So some pretty interesting changes, especially to exotics, as well as some great instances coming with the new road map. But guys, tell me your thoughts on this down below within that comment section. Also, was you like me and many other people, did you think the Definity Trace Rifle would be the red exotic? So if it isn't, what is? Hmm, Bungie hiding that 10th exotic up their sleeve. Possibly people, but on that note we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.